Hello and welcome to Killer Queen 2485 presents A Rumor of Stitches. My name is Janice and welcome. Uh, it's called Killer Queen 2485 because that is my Xbox name, my gamer tag, my uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, all that good stuff. I'm Killer Queen over all platforms. Uh, and it's called A Rumor of Stitches because I have been saying I've been going to do this for over a year and I haven't done it yet. But now I am. So, this is the first official video. I've made a couple of introductory videos. But this is the first official video and it is about the cathedral window quilt. I've made a couple of these and I had a friend of mine ask me how I made mine and there was a couple of technical questions that she was asking about. So Julie, this video is for you. I start out with a 12 and a half inch square. Um, I've had this forever. It's a Quilters Rule square block lap board. Um, I got this basically just to cut out 12 and a half inch squares. Not for this particular project, but for other projects as well. I got that. Um, and I got the 44 inch wide muslin just so I could cut off the selvage and I could get three complete blocks just by rotary cutting out the squares. So I have the 12 and a half inch square and you fold it in half and you have a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides, which makes it come out to 12 inches. And then you've got it folded in half. Okay, so from this point, you take and you take your square and you take your seam allowances and one goes one way and one goes the other way and you kind of nest those seam allowances together to keep them straight and i'm going to grab a clip oops i'm going to grab a clip here and clip that seam so when i'm sewing i go from one end all the way to the seam here and then I go a little bit beyond. So I'm gonna put another clip here to know where I'm stopping. I leave a space open for turning and I just jump the, I just jump. I don't cut my thread. I start here go all the way down, stop here, make a knot, jump, leave a loose part here, then finish out this seam to, to um, seam that up. And now you've got something that looks like this. It looks a little wonky, but then you turn it inside out and you have a piece that looks like this when you flatten it out and you have it all pressed. Okay, then you'll have a little open space on one of these edges here, and I've already sewn it up on this one. Um, nope, here it is. See, you can almost, it's almost invisible. Um, what I do is I sew from this side to this side, and then when I knot it here, I run it up through here to the point and bring my point here, tack it down. Bring this point here, tack it down. Bring this point here, tack it down. And bring this point here and tack it down. That makes your basic base block for the cathedral window quilt. Um, then you're going to have to put four of these together to get to a point where you can actually start inserting your when actual windows so you have your blocks here 
And what I do is I do them in groups of two and I make it as long as I have the, as long as I want my panel. Cause I do basic panels and then I start putting in the blocks after. So here it is showing you the, how it's all tacked down. You have, if you do it by hand and you don't do it by machine, you have these little open places where you can actually stick your finger through and it's like a, a 3D object. But I start here and go down to the bottom. And w the way I do it is I just do a whip stitch. And I start, I don't start right at the corners of anything. This is a little messy because I didn't clean it out before we started. But um, this is my, just a little kit that, it's a Fonz and Porter traveling kit, but I just made it up because I use this to do all my hand sewing and I, I have it just made up. I usually have like two or three needles already threaded and, but I've been working on stuff and I just put my thread scraps and stuff in here. Uh, I use an open, an open back thimble adjustable. It's a Dritz. Um, I did this, I, I used to have really, really long nails before I became a nurse. So that's why I have an open one and I got used to it and it's just more comfortable for me. Um, so when I'm, do, when I'm doing um, the whip stitch to whip, whip, whip stitch them together to get them ready to put on the windows, this is gonna be the back of your quilt. It's gonna be completely finished. Once you do these, um, once you attach them together and whip stitch them together, they're going to be done. You're going to, you're going to see this as the back of the quilt. And I'm going to show you an example in here in a minute. But what you're going to do is you're actually going to have two of these, two of these, and all of them will have be finished. But I'm just showing you this as an example. This is actually the wrong side when you're making your base. And you will have, you will have, um, your windows in here and that'll make it the front side when you're done but as far as putting the bases together this is the wrong side this is the right side because this is going to be the side that you see on the back these you're going to put right sides together and you're just going to whip stitch now don't start at the top i start here close to the top and i put my knot that way i don't have to I just double stitch that at the beginning. I do just a loose stitch up until the point till I get to this point right here. I'm gonna match these points. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do them really close together. This is a gray thread usually I do it with a natural color thread that matches my muslin and I'll sit in front of the TV and just do this and go all the way down my panel my panels I think are like four or eight across and 20 down. We'll look at a panel here in a minute because it's been a, a, a hot second since I've worked on a panel because I've been working a lot of overtime at the hospital. So I'll go all the way down and see when you go to the other side, you don't see any stitches. All this will be, all this will be invisible because it's gonna be on this side. And all of this will be invisible because once you set in your window, your window is going to go right here. And you can see on the quilt behind me, I'll pull a piece over. This right here is covering your join here. 
that's what you're seeing when you see all this and you don't see any joins in between the quilt and in between the quilt blocks it's because that window has covered this up Okay, so this is a panel that I have already put together. Um, it does measure four blocks by 10. That's the, that's the basic panel that I've got put together because that's, that is as big as I can handle and still be able to comfortably go like this to get to a, to get to a block to be able to turn and hand stitch the pieces down. The finished block, when you make the blocks, the finished block measures six inches. So basically with the seam allowances taken off, you, have, you start out with a 12 inch block. When you fold it in half and fold it in half, you basically get half of what you started with. So each panel, and I have eight panels, so 4, 8, 12, 16 times 20. So that's how many, uh, that's how many quilt base blocks I have is 16, 16 across by 20 long. This is not going to go on a bed. This is going to go up on a wall. And I'll explain to you why in just a second. Okay, so here you have, I have all my joins. These are my, and I'll see if I can show you. See how teeny tiny? And I don't have to be super, super neat on these because I know that all of these will be hidden. But here is my back. And with hand work, you can make sure that your joints in your corners are absolutely perfect. And if they're not, you can fudge it a little bit and make them perfect. So I have these panels like this. And once I get all the blocks joined, then I start putting in my windows. And I lay out a whole panel at one time. I will... Lay out my panel and figure out where I want each piece to go before I ever start sewing them together, sewing them in the, the windows. And I just attach them with safety pins. Now, I have a little three inch window fussy cut. Um, acrylic ruler that I used to cut out windows when I first started but it became very monotonous because if you look and you have a piece of fabric and it's too big like this one's gonna be way too big all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold that under and fold it over like this and seam it down. And I got to where I was just cutting, I was just eyeing it. Um, because even when you turn it under and you're just basically um, blind stitching this down, and I'll show you a close up of that in a minute of what it looks like finished, but you're just sewing this down. Then you come over to this side you're gonna fold this side over and you're gonna catch that corner and you're gonna have this side folded down. Nobody's ever gonna know how big that piece was underneath. So I just quit cutting them the actual size and gave myself a little bit of leeway. This I think is, is almost too small on this one but by the time I get done with it, it'll be fine. Uh, let's see if I can, if I've got one started up here at the, yeah. Okay. So, 
this is what I do when I'm when I'm getting ready to sew a part. Okay. So I will start, and there's a lot of strings on this. Uh, I will start in the middle of a a row right here, so that I can hide my knot underneath, just like I did when I was putting them together. I started down here, went up and went back. Well, here you don't have to go back and uh, go for, over it again, but I just hide my knot underneath. That way I can get to it. But instead of going around a whole block, I will go here, 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 which this one's already done, but I'll go, or I can go here, 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 until my thread runs out. And then I'll pick up somewhere else and fill in. And I do that, I have like an 18 inch piece of thread and I just keep going until my thread runs out. And it's, it's a really easy take along project because there's really after you have everything planned out and they're just pinned down all you're doing is just sewing it's just repetition there's no thinking there's no planning it's just you're just doing it all right so that is one of the one of the uh panels that i have planned and it looks like a hot mess right it looks all wrinkled but when you're sewing it down, you're handling it so much you don't even have to iron it because the heat from your hands just press it down for you and get those pieces where they can be sewn down. And then you have something that looks like this. This is a completed panel. Well, this is actually two completed panels. Um, there's this one. And there is another one on the back. So this one is eight by 10. And I'll make all of the panels eight by tens. They started out four by tens. I'll put two together. Uh, they're gonna be eight by tens. And then once I do that, then there'll be 16 by 16 by 20s that's as big as the quilt's gonna get uh let's see let me show you how i'm putting the two panels together because i had a specific question about that part okay so and i have to find the joint oh there it is uh -huh. because like i said you can't tell where everything's being joined together, even from the back, unless there's a split, because once it's done, it's done, it's completed. You have no extra quilting to do, nothing like that. Okay, so I'm at the point of the two quilts where I am right here. And what I've done is I've joined these two together. Let me get a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, so I've got these two that are joined together. This one's done, this one's done, all the way up. And I'm joining the two together. And then I'm inserting my block as I go because it's a little bit unwielding right now. It's very cumbersome to go like in through this way. So I leave a gap and I'll go in underneath through this way. So I'm, I'm actually, as I'm closing the, the gap between the two panels, I'm actually putting in the extra window that goes in between the two panels as I'm as I'm closing it up. And how I did that, I'm gonna show you how I'm how I did that. So remember when I said when I'm joining the two together, I'm matching up the corners and I start down here a little bit make my knot, go up, stitch, and then continue stitching down. But what I'm doing, when I'm putting the panels together, I go ahead and match up that seam right there in the corner. And I go ahead and put a clip there. These clips are pretty strong, so they can hold it. And I'll clip a couple just so that they won't pop apart. Let's put another one right there. 
and I will have two needle two needles going at the same time. So what I will do is I will go up and then start coming back and I'll go a little bit down here and stop. I won't cut my thread, but I'll stop sewing and go ahead and secure this, put this panel in and get that one finished before I go to the next section. Then I'll go back to this one, finish this block, end up a little bit here. And I never end, I never end on a join. I always go a little bit past that. But on the joins, I do make extra um, stitches just to make sure that that part is not going to pop apart. Because I have had that happen before. And I can show you on... I think it's on this one. Yeah, right here. I'm going to show you on this black one. Um, my joins right here at these corners they came apart and you can see where i have the thread here we can't really see it very well because this is black on black but um there you can see it i can i can see the joins here where i joined them together where i tacked down that middle part and i'm just gonna have to go back in and and just tack it back down it's not a big deal um uh, but this is my first one uh, it's all batiks on a black pebble background. It reads like a black background. Um, but after this started popping off, then on my new one, this one, I started reinforcing those. The joins here, and I started reinforcing all the joins in the blocks when I, were, I was putting in the windows. And then after all those are together, then you will just have a huge quilt that is mobile friendly. You can take it with, I take, I take mine with me everywhere. And voila. I've had pictures of this quilt. This was my first one. It was all batiks, all made from one one piece of fabric all these colors were just all from one piece of fabric and it's on a black pebble background but it reads as a black background so that was my first one but this is my second one and every window is a different fabric i have batiks I have uh, 30s, 40s reproduction prints. I have um, little cartoony ones. I have some with uh, M&Ms, the season ones. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff on here. Oh, there's one. M&M Christmas. I have... Dr. Seuss. I have Japanese. There's one of my favorites. Peacock. Anybody who knows me in real life knows that I'm crazy about peacocks. And this, this particular quilt, when it's finished, is going to have 600 different windows. And each one of them is going to be a unique piece. As you can see behind me, here's a little bit of my fabric, and then you can see just a peak of some of the fabric over here. I went through every single piece of fabric I had, all of my scraps, and got a little three inch window to put in here. Then when I ran out of those, I started going to Missouri Star Quilt Company and buying charm packs. They were really cheap. You can get a lot of them for their deal of the day. And I got some for like 80% off, 60% off, 40% off. But their little charm packs come in, I think there's 42 pieces, but they can be anywhere from 10 unique pieces up to half of the pack be unique pieces. 
So I just take these and I put those in there. And of course I fold them down to where they fit in the, in the window. But I have all 600 pieces now and now I'm just working on the quilt. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you wanna follow along, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, see you later. Sewing, it's not just a hobby. It's a 2020 survival skill. Yeah, it's also a survival skill for my mental health.